right so today we are going to talk about cell cycle some detail about mitosis and certain genes which regulate the different steps during the cell cycle right and what is the role of such genes in development of cancer so let's start with a very simple concept so what is cell cycle right cell cycle basically a concept related with that how a cell passes through different phases to divide into two daughter cells right what is cell cycle cell cycle is consisting of all those events and phases through which a cell passes a mature cell passes eventually to divide into two cell right now let's start that normally cell cycle has two parts number one is called interface and second is called mitosis so let's go with the examples let's suppose there is a cell here right and this cell plans to divide right this is a mature cell here and it gets stimulus and it is going to divide of course when cell is going to divide it has to duplicate its genetic material it's going to pass through the mitotic division so it has to duplicate its genetic material as well as it has to increase its what cytoplasm proteins and organelles now when this cell is planning to go for division now first of all it has to duplicate its dna is that right so let's suppose cell in this stage it is duplicating its dna and i put dna molecule which is open and it is being replicated it is being replicated over here dna molecule now when cell plan to undergo division it does not directly start replicating its dna before starting the re replicating its dna cell has to produce lot of proteins and lot of enzymes right increase its cytoplasm increase its organelles and produce those enzymes right which can help in replication of dna and produce all those proteins which should help in replication of dna so this stage where dna is being synthesized we call it s stage s phase is phase of dna synthesis and phase of cell before the dna synthesis right that is called pre synthetic phase what is this phase pre synthetic phase synthetic mean synthesis of dna now this phase which is pre synthetic phase right this is also called gap 1 or growth phase 1 or simply we call it g1 is that right so when a cell plan to divide first it will enter into g1 phase where it will do all its preparations at molecular level and organelle level to synthesize to get ready to synthesize the dna then dna synthesis process will start right so all the, during that time when dna synthesis is going we call this phase s phase and once the dna has been synthesized mean dna has been semi conservatively replicated when dna has been replicated right it means that 2n has become 4n right or we can say when dna is replicated every chromosome has become double structured chromosome right after that once dna replication is complete now it has to go to next phase in the next phase it should get ready it should get ready to divide that genetic material which has been duplicated for the two daughter cells now when cell is preparing after the synthesis when cell is preparing itself to divide the nuclear genetic material equally into two daughter nuclei right that preparation phase is called g2 or growth phase 2 or gap 2 so what is g2 g2 is post synthetic but pre mitotic phase post synthetic but pre mitotic phase during g2 phase what's going on cell is getting ready to divide its duplicated dna into two daughter nuclei is that right now 
once it has been through the G2 phase, eventually it will enter into next phase where it is going to divide the genetic material and this nuclear membrane will eventually dissolve and genetic material will go to both sides of cell so that it can go for the new two daughter nuclei. Now that phase in which nuclear duplicated or replicated DNA or chromosomes they are under the process of division is that right for the two daughter nuclei this stage is called mitotic stage what is it mitosis stage or we simply call it M phase right now after the M phase eventually when cell has divided into two cells right it has divided into two cell in some cases in some tissues cell directly enter into next cell division in some other tissues cell may go and take rest right and if cell goes out of the replicating cycle or proliferative cycle we say it has gone to growth phase which is G0 is that right so let me repeat it rapidly rather why don't you repeat for me yes cell cycle what is cell cycle cell cycle means all the events which are occurring in a cell when it is going to divide from one cell into two cell to divide one cell into two cell we have to basically make cytoplasm more organelle is more and specially DNA should be replicated and equally divided into two daughter cells now first G1 phase what is that cell is getting ready for synthesis of DNA it is getting ready for synthesis of DNA it is not yet dividing its DNA right so it is pre synthetic phase is that right then DNA replication start or synthesis start right S phase then cell enter into the preparation that how replicated DNA should be divided for two cells for example here it will make the proteins which are related with yes spindle formation once those proteins which are required for division of cell they are made then cell will start separating its chromatids or replicated DNA and go through processes which will make two daughter nuclei and eventually two daughter cells that is mitosis right and as soon as it ends up mitosis end up in some tissues cell may go again into proliferation and in other tissues cell may exit out of the cycle and start resting and they may come into cycle again if there is appropriate stimulus for proliferation right now those tissues in which cells are cycling continuously there are some tissues in our body that uh, cells there are continuous, continuously multiplying it means as soon as cell completes its mitosis it enter into G1 cell does not go to G0 and G1 and again process start can you tell me some tissues like that yes please yes please skin, skin very good skin cells right there all the time multiplying any other tissue gastrointestinal gastrointestinal cells they are all the time multiplying is that right so such cells or tissues are called that in these tissues where cells are multiplying all the time cells are multiplying all the time we call those tissues the cells there are labile cells labile cells are those cells which are multiplying all the time in the tissues and these cells once they complete mitosis they don't enter in G0 once they complete one division, they go for the next division. Is that right? They are labile cells. Such cells are seen in classically in your gastrointestinal system. Such cells are also seen in the skin. Some of the skin cells are continuously replicating. They don't go into G0 phase. And then such cells are also present in bone marrow, hematopoietic cells. Hematopoietic cells also keep on multiplying. After the labile cells, then there are some other tissues in which once cells have completed a cycle if that tissue does not require more cell cells will go into G0 stage and cells will remain in G0 stage where they are doing housekeeping function the genes which are concerned with housekeeping of the cell only those genes are working plus if that tissue has some special function those genes are working but cell is not planning to divide 
So in some tissues, cells come out of the cycle, go into G0, but with appropriate stimulus, they can be forced to proliferate again, right? Such tissues are said to be stable tissues. Stable tissues mean that or stable cell, in some tissues there are stable cells, stable cells are those cells when in the tissue most of the cells are in which phase? G0, but normally they are not regularly multiplying, but if there is a proper stimulus they can multiply. Is that right? So can you tell me example of stable tissue? Yes, please. Not neuronal cell, not muscle cell, you are going to miss your MCQ, yes. Stable tissues where cells are normally not replicating, but if there is appropriate stimulus, cell can leave the G1 stage and enter into this, rapido. No, none of you knows it. Wow. Why don't you tell me liver, hepatocytes? Hepatocytes are normally not multiplying in a very fast rate. Most of the hepatocytes, most of the time are in G0. But if you cut a piece of liver, then cells will come out of G0. They will enter into cycle G1 and then they will start multiplying and make it good. Is that right? Cells in the kidney, tubules, nephron cells, cells in the pancreas. So these cells which are not in these cells, in these tissues, there are stable cells. What are stable cell population? Where most of the cells are arrested in G0 and they are just doing their general and special functions but not planning to multiply. But if there is appropriate stimulus, they can be brought into cycle and multiply. Clear? Then there are some tissues where cells are permanent cells. Permanent cells mean, permanent cells mean that in those tissues, once cells have divided, they go into G0 phase, but they cannot re-enter into G1. In some tissues, some cells or most of the cells, once they have multiplied and gone into G0 phase, right, you cannot bring them back into cycle. So those, in those tissues, cells are permanent and they don't multiply. If you want to increase the cells in those tissues, then you have to find the stem cells in those tissues which should multiply. But in these tissues, where there are permanent cells, once the permanent cells are well differentiated, they are doing their general and specific function, they cannot be pulled back into cycle. Yes, what are these tissues? What are these cells? Now you can tell me neuronal cells, neurons, they are permanent. Is that right? You cannot drag the neurons back into multiplication or proliferation cycle. Then there are muscle cells. Don't tell me just muscle cells. Smooth muscle can proliferate. Tell me skeletal muscle cells and myocardial cells. Right? So skeletal muscle cells and myocardial cells, they are permanent cells that uh, once they are fully differentiated, you cannot they will go into G0 phase and you cannot drag, drag them back over here. Am I clear? Any problem up to this? Now, one thing which is very important to understand, first of all I will go briefly into stages of mitosis. How do you define mitosis? Yes, mitosis. Division, she thinks division of cell is mitosis. Anyone will come with better definition? What is mitosis? Let me tell you. Don't confuse. First you should be clear what is in cell cycle, what is mitosis and what is interphase. Interphase is G1, G1 phase plus what is this? S phase and plus G2 phase. It means when cell is planning and making lot of proteins so that it can enter into DNA synthesis plus when cell is replicating its DNA and plus when cell is making proteins and organelles ready for mitosis, we say all these stages from here G1, S up to G2, all these stages, right, they are together called interphase. What are they called? Interphase. But this stage is called mitosis. Now I want so you should be very clear what is mitosis. Yes. Okay, he is telling us somatic cells 
when they divide, they divide by mitosis, you are right, and germ cell, when they divide, eventually they go through meiotic division. Uh, I'm asking what is mitosis? Yes, please. It is about the division of nuclear material. Listen carefully. When I say there is mitosis going on, what does it mean? That is at this stage. During the process of mitosis, right, the replicated or duplicated genetic material in one nucleus should be divided for two daughter nuclei. So when you are talking about mitosis, we are specifically, yes, focusing on division of nuclear material. Is that right? That cell during the synthesis has duplicated its genetic material. And when cells start the process of dividing the duplicated genetic material or replicated genetic material into two sets of identical genetic material for two daughter cells, that is mitosis. And the process in which cytoplasm and organelle is also divided into two and cell membrane separate into two, that cytoplasmic and its organelle is division into two cells is called cytokinesis. So you should be clear about mitosis and cytokinesis. What is mitosis? Mitosis is that once synthesis of DNA has been done, once DNA has been replicated, after that when it is going to duplicated DNA or duplicated genetic material of the nucleus is going to under process so that it can divide the nuclear material duplicated for the daughter cells, this is mitosis. And during this process, mitosis is going for the nuclear material. But during the mitosis, also organelles and cytoplasm and cell membranes are undergoing division so that not only there are two daughter nuclei, but there are two daughter cells. And this process of dividing the cell into two daughter cell is cytoplasm of the cell when divided into two, we call it cytokinesis. Is that right? Any problem here? No. Now, very briefly, what are the stages of mitosis? I know all of you know it very well. They start teaching from high school and they keep on teaching doctors until they are there. So stages of mitosis, before I go into really detail, attention please, again never ever in your life mix the mitosis with the interphase. Interphase is when cell is planning to divide, getting ready for division, is that right? That include G1 presynthetic phase, synthetic phase, pre-mitotic phase, right? This is all interphase and this is I am going to explain phases of mitosis in which mainly we are focusing on what? Nuclear material division. Is that right? Now, this nuclear division during the mitosis, there are four phases of mitosis. What are those four phases of mitosis? Who is going to tell me? Four phases of mitosis, I know, everyone knows that very well. Yes. Yes, she knows it's prophase, very good, then, then it will go into what? Prophase into metaphase and then, okay, let me put it prophase here, prophase goes into, yes, metaphase and metaphase goes into anaphase and anaphase goes into telophase, is that right? How do you remember that? You remember them or not? You remember them, that's good, but only there's an easy way to remember that. Just P and mate, right? P, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, is that right? Okay. Don't uh, stimulate your imagination too much. Concentrate on the lecture. Now, what happens in the prophase? Listen, this prophase which I'm drawing here, actually if I say that this is G2 and mitosis is going from here up to here. 
Is that right? Now, when cell is going through this phase, what are the changes coming? Of course, you know the changes are prophase, yes, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. But this is not enough to know. What happens during prophase? Let me make a cell here, right? And we are going to see what happens in this cell during the prophase. Now, just before the prophase, cell was going through G2. During G2, what has happened? This is a nucleus, nuclear membrane at this phase I'm talking about, before just prophase, right? There is what? G2 phase, there is well clear cut, what is this? Nuclear membrane, the DNA is prominent or not during G2? Chromosomes are well prominent or not? Once the, D, you know normally when DNA replicates itself, it opens up, right? And it condenses during the prophase. So originally in the beginning of before the pro before the prophase, DNA is very light. Okay, let me give you some different color for DNA. DNA is double structured, but genetic material occurs, they are making loose network. This is before the prophase. And centrioles may be randomly present over there. Now, now this cell which is in G2, what is it? This cell is in G2. Now it is about to enter or it is entering into prophase. When it is entering into prophase, I told you it is phase of mitosis and mitosis means separation of genetic material of nucleus into two identical set. So what should happen? Logically tell me, what should be the next step in this cell? What should be the next step? First of all, before you do anything, this, these loose chromatin condense itself. What should happen? This loose chromatin condense itself. When loose chromatin will condense itself, then what will happen? That chromosomes can be seen more clearly because they become condensed. And every chromosome will be single structure or double structure? It will be double structure because during synthesis phase we replicated the DNA. So now here where chromatin is loose, it becomes condensed chromatin and you are able to see the chromosomes double structure. Is that right? So what is the first step in prophase? Chromatin become condensed and what is becoming more visible? Chromosomes which are visible as double structured. Plus, do you think if nuclear membrane remain intact, can you divide this into two daughter nuclei? No. So next step is that nuclear membrane start dissolving. Nuclear membrane start dissolving. And with that, we are going to make spindle and to make a proper spindle, we have to get this centrioles at the, what is this? At the edges. Two opposite pole. So these are the three basic changes which occur in during prophase. That chromatin become condensed, number one. Number two, nuclear membrane become indistinct and start dissolving and disappearing because there are special nuclear proteins here which are called laminin. And some enzymes will come and they will phosphorylate the laminin proteins and when laminin protein become phosphorylated, nuclear membrane start dissolving. In the same way, in the chromosome, there are proteins called histones, histone 1. When histone 1 gets phosphorylated, the nuclear star, these chromosomes start getting condensed. Is that right? So phosphorylation of histones in, what is this, chromatin condenses this, phosphorylation of laminin in the Nuclear membrane dissolve this and arrangement of centrioles at the polar end. This is prophase. As soon as, now listen carefully, as soon as this membrane totally disappear and microtubules start developing clearly, cell will go into next phase. Let's suppose this is here. Now nuclear membrane has disappeared. Centrioles are present over here. This is one centriole. This is other centriole and tubules start extending.
right micro tubules why this spindle is being made because this stru double structured chromosomes should be read on that structure before the division is that right so that there should not be mistake during the division of genetic material so next phase is nuclear membrane has been disappeared and microtubules form mitotic spindle is formed and your genetic material which now consists of what chromosome which are double structured they are arranged on equatorial plane right and when mitotic spindle is very clearly formed and dense chromosomes are arranged on the spindle and especially these what is this tubular microtubule get attached what is this point can you talk cores the point where two chromatid what are chromatid when one chromosome has double structure each structure is called chromatid both structures are identical chromatids look this is single structured chromosome and after the s phase every chromosome become double structured and this double structured chromosome has two identical right material each material is called chromatid 1 and chromatid 2 now if each chromosome consists of two chromatid because each chromatid will go to one daughter cell and plus this is a special point where the tubule will bind microtubule mitotic system will bind here and here what is this kinetic core kineto i don't know you call it chore or core it's up to you is that right now once cell is at this stage this is called metaphase prophase has gone to metaphase how the prophase enter into metaphase by losing its nuclear membrane condensing its yes chromosomes arranging its micro tubule formation system of centriole and when centriole have tubules and chromatids are double structured chromosomes are arranged on these spindle we say cell is in which phase metaphase once this has been done cell will go to the next stage in next stage we are dividing the nuclear material into two now look what has happened each double structured chromosome look here each double structured chromosome will break at this point right and then this tubule this will pull this part to one side and this part of the tube my uh, spindle will pull the other chromatid to other side in this way from every double structured chromosome which will break at its centromere and each chromatid will start moving to the opposite pole is that right so at that very phase when this is going on right this double structure have been broken and now it is being dragged to that side and other structure which are counterpart with it that is being dragged on other side same is true over here so what has happened that these double structure cro uh, chromosomes having two chromatid is actually broken in the center is that right and two identical chromatids are moving to the opposite pole when cell when you can see structure like this we say it has gone into anaphase and eventually it will come to which stage telophase in telophase what happen yes in telophase now this cell will start dividing its what is this even cytoplasm right so the cell will go into this phase now it is planning to become two daughter cells and these chromatids have reached right to the pole here and here here and here now what is the next thing to be done you will now yes you will now bring the membrane back right so what is that thing going to happen there in this phase which is telophase you are making the nuclear membrane right so actually original nucleus which was at the prophase is now appearing as yes what two daughter nuclei right and with that now 
during this phase again it will lose its condensation and chromatin will become loose originally chromatin was loose in the end again it will become loose originally nuclear membrane was there in the end nuclear membrane will again form right and when this membrane cell membrane is coming from the sides and about to divide into two so that cytoplasm and organelle is also divided into two we say cytokinesis is going on so in the telophase what happens chromatid from double structured have been separated and reached to the pole nuclear membrane again appear and cytokinesis is completing and cell divide into two any question up to this there's no question okay so this was very basic information now we go to little more detail listen carefully we have not discussed what forced this cell right we have not discussed what forced this cell to move from g0 up to g1 and go to synthesis phase and then go into g2 and mitosis phase did we discuss those factors no we just said that there was one cell in g0 it started preparation for the dna synthesis and that is g1 then it started dna synthesis as phase then it started preparation for mitotic nuclear division g2 then it went under nuclear division that was mitosis am i clear but actually we did not talk about who told the cell that let's start division because cell division is very very regulated phenomenon very very regulated phenomenon if cells start proliferating out of control do you think you will remain so beautiful if suddenly this ear become like that the nose goes like that all the cells division is very very regulated question is that that a simple talk that these are the interface and this is mitosis and cell one cell become two cell there's no talk, no much medical advance now you are studying medicine in a times where now we really know how the cell decides to enter into division what are the molecular signal to a cell that it is entering into g1 phase we know at molecular level what is going on into the cell is that right not i will tell you something very interesting you know here the dna replication will start right do you think if the cell which is going from g1 up to s phase if already its genetic material has been damaged by radiation or by virus or by some chemical substance right there was cell sitting here it has entered into g1 phase it is planning and getting ready to duplicate its dna but let's suppose this dna is already injured or damaged do you think this cell should be allowed to go from g1 phase to dna synthesis without repairing its dna no so what happens at this point at this point where g1 phase is about to enter into s phase s phase there should be special event the special activity here what is this activity before the cell enter into starting its replication all its dna should be scanned and made sure that its dna is healthy and if there are some mutations or there are some dna damages they should be repaired only then after making this surety cell should be allowed to move from g1 to s is it good for us or bad for us very good for us that every time cell is going to proliferate during the g1 it is ensured that its genetic material is absolutely correct only then it can enter into s phase so there are some special we say normally there is a hurdle here there is a hurdle here there is a problem here that when cell is rapidly coming to this phase of the cycle if it does not ensure its dna is not okay cell will be arrested at this stage cell will be if dna is not okay cell will be arrested at this stage and if it is confirmed if dna is okay right then cell will be allowed to move forward this point we call it checkpoint you know when you are moving from one country to other country there is a checkpoint where they check your passport and everything 
here cell is going to check what originality of its DNA right we call it a checkpoint what is this checkpoint this checkpoint is a point where if DNA is not okay cell can be arrested at this stage repaired its DNA only after that it can pass through this checkpoint this checkpoint is called G1 checkpoint G1 checkpoint or we call it G1S checkpoint is that right once it is ensured that DNA is having no dangerous mutations or changes then whatever DNA is here it will replicate once the DNA has been replicated it will enter into G2 phase it's getting ready for what it's getting ready for what dividing this replicated DNA into two cells another checkpoint will come here you know what my, our enzymes are going to do at this stage now they are going to scan all the DNA and make it sure that all during the replication there was no error do you get it or not it is just like that that if you are going to make photocopy of a book first you make it sure at first checkpoint you make it sure all pages are okay then you make the photocopy make two copies then again ensure before you give these two copies to two persons you ensure there's no mistake in the copies do you understand it this is second checkpoint what is this checkpoint called G2 M checkpoint at the end of the G2 and before the mitotic stage this is second checkpoint and here again it will be checked that every chromosome is really what is that duplicated let's suppose one chromosome is not duplicated properly chromosome number 10 is not duplicated but all other chromosomes are duplicated there is no way cell can move forward until it does not complete the replication of the missing part of the DNA you are understanding me so this is second checkpoint if it does it at this point also it is also now it is moving forward right some people believe there is another checkpoint where it is made it sure that all the DNA is properly aligned on mitosis so that before the final division we should know it there's no mistake that is called m checkpoint m mean checkpoint during the mitosis but at your level you should be very good the concept of two checkpoint number one g1 checkpoint g1 to s right and second is yes g2 to m in both cases cell can be either arrested here cell cycle at first checkpoint or at the second checkpoint why it will be arrested if there is DNA damage before the replication it should be corrected or DNA is damaged during the replication again it should be corrected before mitosis start now you must be thinking what are exactly these checkpoints right again many of our cells right now many cells in your body are either in G0 they are resting or they are in G1 many cells spend long time during G1 and they cannot multiply if they don't come over this hurdle now how it happens right I'm going to take this cell now and make a big diagram here right which cell not all of them I'm going to just take this cell as an example make it a big diagram here and now I'll tell you at molecular level how this cell knows now it is time to multiply is that right and what are the molecular events which are occurring into the cell so that cell can pass through the G1 phase and how cell will jump from the checkpoint and eventually enter into S phase. Now we are going to talk at molecular level. Now we are going to see how the cell cycle progression is controlled. Remember if G1 at the end of the G1 everything goes okay only then cell will enter into S phase and during the S phase if everything goes okay only then cell will enter into G2 phase and at the end of the G2 phase if everything is okay only then cell will enter into mitosis phase now we have to see that what really happens inside the cell let me make one big cell here Now this diagram all of you should draw.
Now, this cell is in G1 phase. It means it is having all the good intention of proliferating. Right? Now, let us suppose this is uh, genetic material in the cell. You know, every gene has a double copy. One copy is coming from mother, and another copy is coming from father. Is that right? Every gene has two copies, two alleles. Now, I'm showing here, suppose mater maternal chromosome material, chrom uh, chromatin, and here's paternal. And on this line, I will arrange the different genes which are important during replication. When a cell is about to replicate, what happens? Right? First, a basic principle. Let us suppose, here are the genes. Just suppose that here are the genes. Of course, this is maternal, this is paternal. Suppose here are the genes that once these genes are activated, cell will start replicating its DNA. If we activate, activate this point, cell will start replicating its DNA. It means if we activate this gene set, what will happen? Cell will jump from G1 to S phase. You are understanding? Car will start. Now, there are some group of genes here. Look here. There are some group of genes here. Let me make it more clearly. First of all, you imagine that there are some genes over here. There's a group of genes. When these genes are expressing, they force this system to force the cell to multiply. They are having a positive effect on these genes. And there is another set of genes here. If these genes are stimulated, there is a whole set of genes here. And if these genes are stimulated, they inhibit the cell replication. What does it mean? That, look, this is the genes. Once they are activated, cell start duplicating its DNA. Is that right? Now these genes, these red genes, if they are expressing, their product will lead to cell DNA synthesis or repli DNA replication. If these are working well, what will happen? DNA replication will not occur. Right? It means that when cell is in G0 phase or G1 phase, it is not replicating its DNA. Is that right? When cell is in G1 phase or G0 phase, it is not replicating its DNA. It means in that situation, these genes are underworking and these are overworking and keeping the cell arrested before the S phase. Is that right? But if these genes start overworking and these underworking, cell will start replicating its DNA and jump from G1 to S phase. Is that right? No problem. We can also say that its cell is like a car and you are going to drive the proliferation process. These are accelerator genes and these are biological brakes. Is that right? When these genes are expressed, cell accelerates into proliferative phenomenon and jumps on what? G1 to S phase from first checkpoint. But if these are dominate, dominatingly work, working, cell will be arrested. You have applied powerful molecular break and they cannot, cell cannot jump into S phase. Clear? But the question is, what are these set of genes exactly? Of course, they are not accelerated the way they are in your car. What are these genes exactly? Let me explain now. Now I will go into detail of what are these genes, right? And later on I will go into detail of what are these genes, right? Let me tell you. This is first gene. Of course, there should be another copy here also. But I will not go, I will now onward make only one copy. This is the gene. Whenever is this gene expresses itself, what will happen? Yes, whenever this gene will express, it will make, of course, messenger RNA and proteins. But it cell throws these proteins out. These proteins come out. Now this gene is producing some proteins and they are secreted out of cell. Cell is planning to replicate. Then the next gene. 
next gene expresses itself next gene expresses itself and its product gets inserted where inside the membrane is that right now what is happening the first group of gene has produced a product which has been secreted by the cell and second group of gene has produced a peptide product which is inserted into membrane then what happened this product comes and work on it here what is this this is actually a growth factor and this was the gene for growth factor so first of all genes for go growth factor are stimulated and they start producing the growth factors and then second set of genes is also expressing and they are expressing the receptor for growth factor am i right what is this receptor for growth factor now cell has produced the growth factor which is acting on the same cell which is also expressing the receptors for growth factor is that right then third gene will express here what this gene will do it will produce a product and this product will interact from here right and it will give signal back to the nucleus it means these were going in that direction now you are going to tell me just for little repetition first gene was producing what growth factors or mitogens other name for this is mito gens mitogens are growth factors are soluble mitogens right and cell growth depends on the presence of soluble mitogens plus cell proliferation also depends on the cells should be anchored with each other i will talk that later second is second gene is concerned with what what is this growth factor receptor is the right third gene has expressed itself and it has produced a protein and what is this protein what is this protein signal transducer protein it will take the signal from the receptor and throw the signal back to the nucleus so what is this signal transducer trans Deucer protein. Am I right? Cell is getting ready to multiply. All these things are happening during the G1 phase. The cell is under the influence of growth factors. Cell receptors of growth factors are activated. Those receptors activate the signal transducer proteins, and signal transducers mechanisms are giving signal back to the nucleus. Is that right? In the nucleus. these incoming next gene is activated right now next gene when this gene is activated what this gene is going to do it is going to produce special type of transcriptional factors right the next gene has produced special type of proteins which are in the nucleus now these are transcriptional factor is that right now once once this gene set is activated these are called responder genes what are these genes again this was growth factor genes these were growth factor receptor gene what was this signal transducer genes what are these responder genes responder genes which actually respond to the signals for the growth and they produce transcriptional factor right these transcriptional factor will act on special kind of gene here is it right they will act on this special type of gene and this gene will express itself right and produce special type of molecules and these special type of molecules are called what is this cycle cyclins what are these molecules cyclins is that right now as soon as cyclins are produced 
there is someone who like to go on cycle who is that there is another gene here right there is another gene here and this can produce special enzymes and this gene express all the time remember this gene is a very special gene what is special gene in this this gene not cyclin other gene this is active all the time but cyclin genes are activated only when cell is undergoing replication cycle or sorry proliferation cycle cyclin genes will only express when mitogens or growth factors are there when their receptors are there when signal transducers are there when responder genes are producing transcriptional factor only then cyclins are produced but this protein this is being produced all the time now as soon as cyclin is produced this pro product of this gene will interact with the cycle now let me tell you what is the name of this protein now this protein actually does the phosphorylation of target molecules what is this protein doing phosphorylation of specific target molecules but this will only work when it is riding on the cycle it means this protein is a kinase kinase means it can phosphorylate target proteins but this kinase only work when cyclin is there so we call it cyclin dependent kinases what we call this cyclin dependent kinases the point which you have to remember is that in the cell cyclin dependent kinases are present all the time but they are not active cyclin dependent kinases only become active when their relative relevant cyclins are produced but cyclins are produced in cycle different cyclins are produced at in the proliferating cell at a specific cycle is that right now let's come over here that as soon as cyclins come cyclin dependent kinase is already there so what will happen they will interact with each other they will interact with each other both of them and now what is this here cyclin having a combination of what with it cyclin dependent yes kinase now cyclin dependent kinase is active or inactive it is active when it is active now it will start doing its phosphorylation function is that right don't forget our whole target was what to activate these genes but i have started story from other end now once cyclin dependent kinases are loaded with the cyclins they become enzymatically active and what they do i will tell you in the cell nucleus there is a dog here i don't know how to make a dog okay i will do some effort okay this is less like a dog but you just believe it is a dog right this is a dog in the nucleus there is a dog and this doggy is holding yes special type of what is this transcriptional factor until this transcriptional factor is in the mouth of the dog these factors cannot activate these genes but if this cdk you remember cyclin dependent cdk this complex what was this cyclin dependent cdk with the cyclin right this complex can do a some naughty thing to the dog you know what they can do it what they have done dog has opened its mouth and very uncomfortable and what has happened here this key has gone out and started working here actually what is done by cyclin dependent kinases when once they are activated with cyclin basically they phosphorylate this dog when this dog is phosphorylated it's just like offering too much bone to the dog and it will lose the key 
right as soon as you lose the key it will go and start what this thing this set of genes this set of genes are basically the genes once these are activated cell will start producing the product which will ensure the onset of dna replication and now cell will jump jump from g1 phase to s phase right g1 phase to s phase am i clear right let's have a break and then we'll continue